you know, after tough, like, there's so many tough matches where I come home and I, I just tell my mom, like, I would never want to put my children through this, <laughs> ever, ever. I don't want them to feel... The pain, the sadness, I don't the want defeat. them to feel this, yes, in front of thousands of people going down. But then I wake up the next day and I, I get up and I go to the practice court and I do it again and I look forward to getting back on that court and playing the same opponent and coming out the one that's victorious. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We've got my good friend Maria Sharapova in the house. Good to see you. Back. Back. We're back. Back and excited to talk about your new book. Uh, this was, I was nervous, like I was telling you before, I was nervous to read this because I really wanted it to be good for you. Because I know you spent a lot of time and energy on this, but I was like, I have no clue if Maria can even write because she well, barely you know, went to school. You know I can handle criticism. <laughs> I know. And you know I want your honest opinion. So yeah, that's, and, that's what I want. And I it. stayed up late until 2.30 in the morning to make sure I completed I have the early Thank manuscript you. here, which was, uh, I was so impressed and so, f- so much more fascinated you, by you as my friend to know everything you've gone through to get to where you're at. It's just incredible the amount of it, like uh, lack of security that you had, like financially, emotionally, without your mom being there growing up, unstable environment your entire childhood. You lived right. in a dorm for three, four, five years, I believe, in a tennis academy for many years, which I didn't realize you were like a boarding student. And I lived in a dorm for five for years. A ye- well, it was for a year, but it was oh, okay. in and out. And, got it, got it. Yeah. But you were like 10. I did feel like I was boarding for a long time. <laughs> right. But you were young. You were like 10. I was 10, very young. 9, yeah. 10, 11 or something At like that. one point, they, they didn't allow me to board because I was too young. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I know what that's like to be a boarding student. I mean, your dad was, I think, a few miles away from you. But I was, right. I was, yeah, I was seven hours away from my parents when I went to a boarding school when I was 13. So I just learned more about you that I was fascinated by, about how there's so many moments that you share growing up that if they didn't happen the way they happened, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been a Grand yeah. Slam champion. You wouldn't have been number one in the world. You wouldn't have... Do, want to be doing all the things you're doing and right. so it's just fascinating to me that it's, um, it's very easy to forget once if you don't happen to have it on paper or ever write yeah. it down or ever think about it. it's so easy to forget what happened so many years ago so this wasn't a way for me just going through my life journal which mm-hmm. i did and i actually the diary you keep showing your diary, diary it's amazing was, i go back to my diary and it's crazy. i include passages from my diary um in the book which was uh yeah, which is very interesting to to go back in time and to learn a lot about yourself as you're yes. speaking to your family and mm-hmm. and my my example, the coaches that were in my life and yeah. how those shape you know, how they really shape me and how they just because of them I am where I am today. Yeah. It's amazing. And to be, you know, your mom wasn't around most of your childhood because she was in Russia when you guys came here when you were six. Is that right? Six? Yeah. It's just crazy how everything happened, and it's so cool. I'm just so excited for you. Now Thank that I you. know everything, I'm like Thank just even you. more happy for you. <laughs> and I just I appreciate the level of commitment you had to one thing, yeah. which is like, how do I get to be the best in the right. world at something? Well, and I was the, just the, really happy to share it. I think yeah. because I've never – I don't think I was – until a couple of years ago, I don't think I was um, – available emotionally yeah. to share my story and i don't think you ever as an individual every day think of the depth of your upbringing and i think every individual is different and has a different um coming of age and success mm-hmm. story and we don't really we don't go too deep into it we just we don't think it's that special and um as i did interviews throughout my career and People would ask about me moving to America, uh-huh. and they would just want to know all these little details. And little by little, I, <laughs> I was like, "Is there something cool about this story? Is it something different?" And as I got older, I realized how special it really yeah. was, and um, how inspiring it could be for many other people, girls yeah. and boys, and and parents as well. Because a lot of a lot of this book is about um, the journey of my father mm-hmm. and. I and his amazing. little girl and how I had to, as a little girl, put so much trust in the people that were around me and how my father was able to go on this journey um, with my best interests, mm-hmm. not just his best interests and not a family or financial best interest, 
it's also an athlete story and to success, which um, can go into many wrong yeah, directions. And there's so many tough stories out there of the past. So I was just so fortunate to be able to share a story that um, yeah. that had a really amazing connection with myself and right. my father and mom. Well, your father is like literally like the dad of the century after reading this because he took such a leap of faith to say, really I'm leaving did. my wife, my homeland, like my friends. I don't know English. And I'm going off the trust of this one tennis player that like watched you, I guess, when you were six or something right, or five. And, Tolova, right. and was like, you need to send her away or take her to like America. Well, he could either look like he's the smartest man or the stupidest. Yeah, exactly. It depends how you look at it's it. It's crazy. And just how like he got like he enrolled the the person getting giving the visa like how he just like razzle and dazzle the person to be like, give me a visa. I need to go. I'm taking my like right. child to go. It's yes. like every step of the way, like his conviction for his vision right. for you. And I guess both of you, right. what was possible it just amazes me. His level of commitment. Yeah. I, one of my favorite things that he's, that he speaks about in the book is how sometimes if you think too much about a particular situation or if you really think what is the best move, you won't ever make the right move because sometimes the best decision is not always the smartest one in that particular moment. That's true. And so when he was speaking about that as I was working on this book, that was, was extraordinary to hear mm. that because we just we always want to make the right decisions and we tend to overthink a lot of yeah. the things in our future and our vision and you talk so, about yeah. like feeling like you made a lot of these things yourself just because you didn't know any better and you were like I would just practice hours and hours because I didn't know any better and I felt like exactly and that I was just really had... the only thing I knew and yeah. and I came from um you know I, I spent many years in a country where you didn't have so many opportunities or opportunities to be part of other sports so it was mm -hmm. you know if you did one thing if it was dance or ballet or hockey in Russia um, for me it was tennis I couldn't do all three I just yeah. financially um, just time wise resources everything yeah there. there was just not you didn't have that opportunity which in America when we arrived you had so much opportunity to do that and in ways that's that's pretty amazing that you have you can play twice a week tennis yeah. and twice a week football and lacrosse and swimming and everything right else, yeah. and then figure out at one point what you want to do but sometimes that's difficult because you you like having you have your social groups in each little sport and you know mm -hmm. what will you have to take away do you really want to commit to one thing so it's a tricky it's a very tricky situation. How, how have you stayed? I mean, you've been playing for what, 25 years almost? That... I don't. I'm done counting. <laughs> <laughs> you've been playing for a while. And you're just like, at least the way you write about it, it's like you're just eight, nine, ten hours a day of just hitting a ball just when as hard young, as you can, yes. just like right over trying to hit a can over the net. Right. Barely over just hitting it deep and like in the corners. Just like, how do you do this without getting burnt out? You know, because I did yeah. have all these, I was playing four sports a yeah. season or a year or whatever. And if I got burnt out from one sport, I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to play one of these other three that I like. How do right. you still play at a high level? I'm just like, I'm just going to be, and I got to watch you for the first time in the yeah. last few weeks, which was so awesome for and me to see you. that was just an exhibition. <laughs> I know. I want to see you at like the US Open or <laughs> right. something, like at a right. big stage. Right. But just your mindset, I was just so impressed with how, I don't know, you've just come so far and how you continue to stay committed yeah. to that mindset is how do you stay there after this long? Well, I think one of the things that um, having the hardships of the childhood that I had that I speak about in the mm -hmm. book is is this sense of um, of repetition, but repetition led to discipline. And if it was about the repetition of hitting hundreds of balls it focuses your mind on doing this one thing repetitively and, and ultimately you get this just really good feeling about the stroke that you're hitting or if it's a forehand or a backhand, um, you, f you feel really confident and good. It gives you a self-esteem and a, an awareness and you feel that at a young age. That's not something yeah. that just, no matter how young you are, you know that when something feels natural and good and that you improved on it, um, and you see maybe, you know, your fa someone gives you a compliment or your father or your coach and, and you feel it as well. It, it brings you up. It makes right. you happy. And so, of course, as a young kid, you I wanted that feeling. I, I wanted my father to be happy about my practice. I wanted right. my coach to be happy. I wanted a little chocolate bar at the end. And I knew that if <laughs> I did. Vanilla ice cream with sprinkles. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want it all. And, um, and so I, I, 
I definitely looked for that. I wanted mm. that. And I don't know if that was a sense of, oh, I wanted that attention or people to notice me that I was doing well. But through that process, you, you're learning how to be disciplined through yeah. that repetition and that feeling. And so, and that for me off the court as well, I speak a lot about my mother's influence and how she didn't have much to do with tennis and she didn't come from a sports background at all. So for her, it was more the educational aspect. And I, I talk about how she made me memorize passages and poems and Russian literature that I I just didn't, I had no idea what they even meant. I was so young for any of it all. But the her idea was that if I was challenging myself to do something that I didn't necessarily love and I kept doing mm. it, um, it was building some some sort of toughness in my mind yeah. um, that would help me in other areas in my life. And for me, that became sort of that mental aspect in tennis. Mm. Was there ever a part in tennis where you didn't love for like a period of time where you're just like, I don't love this at all? And you thought about like, why am I doing this? Um, there are a lot of things that come with the sport that you don't necessarily choose. Mm. And, and you don't necessarily know what road that might take you to or how you will feel about it. There are definitely moments where, um, you know, after tough, like there's so many tough matches where I come home and I, I just tell my mom, like, I would never want to put my children through this <laughs> ever, ever. I don't want them to feel the pain, the sadness, I don't the want defeat. them to feel this. Yes. In front of thousands of people going down. But then I wake up the next day and I, I get up and I go to the practice court and I do it again. And I look forward to getting back on that court and playing the same opponent and coming out the one that's victorious. And wow. And then I'm like, well, actually, I would love this experience for my child because it teaches you so much. And it, it, it does. I mean, there's so many hardships and, you know, you have to grow up on your own a lot and you're, you, you mm -hmm. could become very isolated and, and the sport itself kind of, um, you know, it made me, I, I wouldn't even say by choice, but it isolated me from the yeah. very beginning because if I wanted to keep a strong mind and a clear path, I really, I had to, well, even though I could have chosen other directions, um, which maybe wouldn't have continued my success. But, and again, those are all, I think, choices that you make. Another choice that you made that I was just like, I don't know if I could do this, is you <laughs> literally couldn't really be friends with anyone that you're playing tennis with. Like any other girls that you're playing against, you're not like buddy-buddy. You're not like talking and chatting up after the match or before the match. And that was kind of like from when you were like six to nine until now, you really – Say you know at least you, you write in the book that you're like you really can't have friends because then it might make you a little weaker a little softer because you want to you'll feel bad for them or for right and that's got to be hard too you're just like isolating yourself to never really have a community in the sport you're playing right you know in football we may like hate each other when we're playing like right. our rivals but then it's like you respect each other and you're like buddy yeah. buddy you know afterwards well, it's there's like a different I think there's a definitely a difference between respecting each yeah, other that's true. and going into a locker room and knowing that every single one of them in that room works so hard and is so extremely yeah. disciplined right. to get that credential, to get their name in the draw, to be there. And I feel that and I understand that. And so that that respect is always um, is always there for me. But I think... Um, but you're not like, let's go have dinner and have cocktails afterwards and no, relax. No, just because I've always felt it's it's been my workplace. And, and a big part of that, I think, happened when I did win a Grand Slam at a young age. And it immediately, as I said, it, it isolates you because mm -hmm. you you become not just someone that someone plays in a quarterfinal or a final of a tournament, but you become the match that people want to win right um and it becomes so much more and they not only want to be you but they want to have everything that you have all the things that came with winning a grand slam and mm -hmm. and i didn't like that idea and it's not what i really chose it's not what i knew and so i immediately realized that that i want that for myself i mm -hmm. work for it and i'm going to do everything i can for, for others not to have it and right. that's that that's the competitor in me yeah the first, were you the youngest female to win a grand slam or no um, I believe at that age, no, I think I was the third, third, third youngest. youngest to win. Yeah. Man. And you almost didn't even get to the finals. Weren't you down like three sets or something? And then in yeah, the semis? I was, or? Well, in, yeah, against Lindsay Davenport, yeah. I was. She was like was crushing you, right? Completely. And then there was like no a rain chance. delay or something. And yes. you're like. <laughs> I talk about this match vividly <laughs> this because hilarious. it's still a huge. I was so excited as a like, teenager. I was so happy. I was in the semifinals of Wimbledon. It was already a big deal. And yeah. 
just say I described that match quite well because I was it's really amazing. on an I was already on the plane home. Yeah, you were in and the locker room during father, the break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my father just had this intervention. Crazy. With me and he just had this. He started laughing, right? Yeah, he, was, he started laughing in my face and said, "You got this. You're gonna win this." And I was like, so I came from laughing to just being, "Wow, um, maybe I, I have a chance." And she was just dominating. She was dominating. She, she couldn't hit anything. Return. No, I, she was I had crushing your serve. Zero chance. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. I was able to turn it around. How do you think you were able to do that, though? Was it really more your just consistency of just hitting the ball back, or was it her just breaking down because she mm-hmm. was like, I don't know what to do in this situation, or what was that? Well, there was a little bit of a rain delay. Yeah. So I think when you're in a position as a player that's up and ahead the and momentum's gone. all of a sudden has the opportunity to think that you have a chance to be in the Wimbledon final and it's so close and it's, oh, it seems so worse. easy – that's you, you hard. It's mentally, it's tough. Definitely. Have you ever talked to her about this? No. Really? No. She probably thinks about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, she's had so many incredible moments in her career. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you usually tend to think of those rather than the, <laughs> than the tough ones. What do you think is the moment growing up that was, if, if one of them was a different situation, obviously like so many things could have happened where you couldn't be here now, but what was like the one thing that almost ruined it all where you were like, oh, good wow. God, we got out of that situation or cause thank goodness someone rescued us on the side of the street. And at this time, I or, think if there's so many of those moments, once you read the book, I think there's so many that I could say a name. And I just think overall, there's so many paths that we um, could have taken mm. that were wrong or maybe just because when I was young, so many of the decisions that were made were out of my hands. Yeah. And, I really loved sharing like that trust aspect in this book because I had to give a lot of trust as a young girl to my parents. Mm-hmm. And and that's really special as I look back on that because you're as you're growing up and you become a teenager, you kind of, you know, you want to wouldn't say separate from your family, but you want that distance from your family. Um and in my you know, in my youth and my situation, also maybe because I was an only child, um and because they sacrificed so much and I I think I felt that and I knew yeah. that that I I just felt like what they were doing for me was the right thing. And I had to give them that trust um, in order to make decisions for my life yeah. that would bring me to where I would be today. That's crazy. In your mind, what do you think it takes for anyone to be number one in the world at whatever they do? What's, what's it take for that to happen? A lot of things. So many things have to come together. Um, there's hard work, but I, I believe in especially in today's age everyone works hard everyone everyone but you have a different level of hard work you have like this obsessive hard work (laughs) ethic it's like unbelievable i would i wouldn't say it's the the words hard work i think it's the focus i think um i just know personally what focus is able to do for me when i work hard and when i focus on a task or um and even when I do play like the exhibitions that you watch me play mm-hmm. at world team tennis and, and those are just small examples, but like I, for instance, I don't know, ex- I don't know how to differentiate an exhibition to a real match. Like I just know one way, like that's the way that I play and I'm focused and I'm pumping my fists and I'm excited after a good point and I'm emotional. And, um, you know, I, I think exhibitions are also a way to like, show your personality and be, mm-hmm. you know, funny and fun and enjoy the crowd and, Sometimes when I go to that direction, I like I, I don't exactly know what to <laughs> what do. do, I do? <laughs> so exactly, I was like, "Whoa, I'm so out of my element." So I know that you know, I know when when someone pays me to go on a court, they want to see the Maria that mm. they see when I play Wimbledon, and that's what I I want to deliver. Um, and so that's how I treat everything that I do. It's like if I practice and I'm I'm training, or if I have a meeting and I'm with people that I've met for the first time, like that you know, that, that first meeting, that first impression Mm -hmm. takes you to so many directions, um, that that's very important. And what about the mindsets? We talk about this focused hard work, but what about the mindset? Because I think a lot of people say they want to be the best at something, or, you know, I hear a lot of people say, I want to be the best or number one or whatever at the top. What do they have to think about mentally in order to, because it takes decades sometimes to get there. Yeah. How do, how do they, how do you prepare mentally to try to even strive to be the best at something, yeah. even for a moment in time. And then how do you try to stay there once you're there? 
Oh, don't we all want to know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I think I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. But I, I would, I definitely see this, this, everyone seems to have this aspect of rushing, like rushing to get to the next step and rushing to make a certain amount of money. And mm -hmm. um, when I, when I think of goals, I don't necessarily think of specifics. I just think of more of feelings of how I would feel when I get to that. Mo what is my success and how does that feel like? Um, instead of saying, okay, I want to, I want to win this amount of titles and I want to win mm -hmm. this amount of grand slams or I want to earn this amount of money. Um, I think that always, I think more of the feeling, how am I going to feel when I win match point? I visualize it. I, I embrace that feeling and I carry it with me. Like you visualize um, it all the time or in the moment? I think moments. And, and I think it always comes when you least expect it. Sometimes yeah. you can be on a, on a run. Sometimes those long plane rides where, you know, it's sunset and, and it's just you and you've been traveling and you're going home and you have mm. no one around you, just yourself on the flight. It's just a bunch, hundreds of strangers right. next to you. And you have this moment where, um, you start thinking of why you're doing this. Why are you lonely? Why are you in this position? And you think of what you've already done to get there and where you would like to see yourself go. So it, those moments always come at a yeah. different, I don't, I don't sit down and I think, okay, right now I'm going to visualize, um, the feeling that I might have when I win a tournament or, yeah. yeah, but I definitely, I think it's important to, mm -hmm. I, when you say things or, you know, when a friend of mine says something negative and I was like, don't put that in the universe. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't put that out there. Yeah. I do believe in that. There's some sense of um, truth in that Absolutely. because it's also comes with, then you carry it with that attitude. You know, when someone says something negative, you usually see their attitude change and, mm -hmm. um, and shows I, up in your body and your yeah, energy. Yeah. And I, I mean, I for sure do that as well. And I have my moments and, but the faster you acknowledge it and realize yeah. it, the faster you can move on. Yeah. So you went through a big, uh, you know, this unfortunate experience in the last couple of years. You 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 got silver at the Olympics in 2012. Then you had the surgery after that or before that? When was your surgery? Um, before that. Before that, right. But then you came back and you won a French Open in 2015. Is that right? I won in 2012 and then 14. 14. And then in 2000, I'm trying to get the dates, 16 is when the yeah, Australian the Open year, thing, right? right. Where you got, uh, you know, Suspension. hundreds of athletes got, you know, caught for using something that they announced, uh, but didn't really tell anyone that they announced this new re regulation. You were the one that was made an example of out of everyone, unfortunately. It had an incredible, you know, effect on you, I think, over the last year I was year the only one being suspended for it. Uh, yeah, so that you were made an example, unfortunately. Well, those are your words, not yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which was also, it sounds like, was, you know, this, a very challenging time for you. I was, I met you right before it happened, I think like right. the month before exactly. or something. And I was just felt horrible for you because I was like, this has got to be the worst feeling. Because you were writing about in this, how you were like, you know, maybe this is my last year. And exactly. I'm going to go out and hurrah, like yep. try to win another Grand Slam and, and call it a day and, and right. then retire like on top. And then this has happened where you're suspended for 15 months. Uh, then they, I guess they took back the claim or something. They, they. I was suspended for two sus years and then that was reduced to 15 months. Yeah. yeah. Um, and during that time you learned a ton. So I've known you like this whole time this has happened. Right. You've grown a lot. You got to go to Harvard to practice, uh, to, te to learn uh, from yeah, a couple of great weeks. teachers. You got to travel, you got to explore, you got yeah. to date, you got to do all these yeah. different things and have fun probably for the first time. Really did. And yeah. relax yeah. and recover, which was kind of cool. Um, now I'm curious, and now you just came back a few months ago and you've been competing. You got a couple minor injuries. So you're like, had a little bit of a setback. Yeah, setback. What's the, what are you playing for now? And what's the vision moving forward? Because again, you've achieved everything pretty much yeah. that you can achieve. I, I mean, that's right. just more champ, <laughs> more championships, but you've won every big tournament, right? Yes. And I think, um, I think that's one of the questions that I asked myself as I was kind of coming back into the routine of playing tournaments again in April. And as I left for the trip, um, I had been home for, for a few months at a time, which mm. was unusual and so different than, than ever in my life. Yeah. Um, and as I was leaving, I, I noticed this feeling that I was, 
I was just so ready to go. Like there was no sense of I'm leaving something behind mm. or I have, I mean, one of the greatest things was being able to, I met so many, so many new friends yeah. and, um, you know, been able to really form great friendships and partnerships during that time and really be there for people that I mm -hmm. haven't been able to be there for. But as I was leaving, I, I, f I had the sense of just contentness that I, or happiness that I, I formed these bonds. I formed um, a little bit of a normal life yeah. and I didn't feel like I was leaving it. I just felt like I was going to do something that I was meant to be doing and that mm -hmm. was my work and I knew that I had that when I would be coming back home and so that I think that was a really great feeling to have yeah. because I think it's always scary to um to just go away from it and because I've done it for so many years um mm -hmm. those first few days away from home are just are really they're tough you know different food you have different yeah, people hotels. just hotel room it's just everything is cold and opening a suitcase <laughs> it's just i don't know it's yeah. so sterile like is that the right word like sterile, sterile. Yeah, yeah 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 so it just it doesn't but, feel very friendly but you, you felt know? good leaving but i felt like i wanted it mm. like i really really wanted it and i didn't have any regrets of leaving yeah. and so i knew that that was a really good sign that's good because if and you didn't want it, then it'd be hard to play it'd at a top It'd be really level. hard. It'd be really hard. And I didn't, um, you know, there's so many little things of a routine that you do every day that that are fun at first, that are exciting. But when you do it hundreds of times, such as pre, you know, pre-practice warm-ups or the shoulder rub-downs. And when you do it dozens and dozens of times, um, it gets old. There's very no old. <laughs> it's very gets old, old. Boring. Right. But I... I loved every part of it mm. in the weeks that really? followed when I left. I lo I just loved the feeling of getting mm. in a, an official transportation car. Usually I want to I want to feel anonymous. I always say I love being in a taxi in in New York City cuz mm. everyone there's hundreds of taxis. No one is yeah. looking in the window to see who's in a taxi. Yeah, they just yeah. know it's another passenger in a car. When we're sitting in an official transportation car with the logo of the tournament and um, kind of the announcement of the, well, someone, someone knows in another car that there's a tennis player in the yeah. car. So they're all looking at you and they're trying to see who it is. So I love that anonymous feeling. And, um, and I loved getting in a car mm. where people knew that here's an athlete. Uh -huh. She's going to the courts and she's, she's playing in this tournament at this, um, at this venue. And I, I wanted that feeling. And yeah. so I knew those are, I felt like all were good signs. Cause yeah. I was, I think I was a little scared of that. Um, cause it can, it's a long, it's a, it's a long process. So There's, much work. Yeah. And so without, without really understanding what I wanted to come from this, I knew that I had the desire and I knew I was looking forward to those things. And yeah. I knew as long as I had that, I will have the motivation to train as hard as I can to be a winner at the end of a certain match. Mm. And so what's, what's the goal now then? You're back, you're playing. I think I think every stage will I'll I'll carry a different goal in my mind. Um, but you're not like I'm going to play for this many more seasons, or no. I'm trying to win a Grand Slam. Do you have that vision? No, or I dream? I never did. I never I never had that vision. But a, a few years ago, and you just wanted to win every time you on the step on the I court. I did, but I was also yeah. starting to think about the end, and that's something that I think I share in mm -hmm. the book. That was a big surprise for a lot of the people that are that are just starting to read it and that mm -hmm. um that were close in my life that I didn't really share with because I I wasn't so sure but I was it was always on my mind it was like this when when would I end and how would I end it and and so it played it played as as part of this um do I even want to come back do I really want this but there's nothing that 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 stopped me from it yeah so I don't see I don't I don't look at the future and say this is my goal and this is my timeline. I think everyone has a different timeline. Mm -hmm. And based on just even if you look at my whole life, I've had so many surprises and so many uncertainties. And um, so I don't want to say that this will be the time to end it because I, I don't want to play it out like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't know. I think I also don't want to know. Yeah. I think I'll, you'll just, you'll know like when I you like, know, right? Yeah, I think you'll so. You'll feel when it. I, right. You'll be like, I don't want to play anymore. I'm good. Maybe. I'm good. Maybe. But I, I, certainly have the feeling that I'll be playing much longer than I thought that I would be a few years ago. Ooh, all right. Definitely. I like it. Some foreshadowing. All right. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I want to see you in a grand slam. I want to think the U S open or something. I think it'd be awesome. Well, it sounds like Wimbledon's your favorite place to play based on this. Right. And so special. if you get it's back there, special. I would love to go there and, and watch. Um, 
so what is your who you have this team now that's supporting you and they yeah. could be like oh here's an athlete who's done it all is she going to be around is right. she because you probably don't tell them what you're going to do they don't no. know right um I don't share like long term goals or visions. I mean, yeah. I have a contract with each one of them, and they know that based on Got the it. timeline that sure. I obviously look forward to playing those years and fulfilling right, right, right. their contracts. But of course, you never know yeah. um, with with the body and health and, um, yeah. and motivation and all those things. But how do you keep them inspired and kind of like this vision of moving forward if yeah. they're you know you're unclear of where you're going to go? Yeah, I think that I think by them showing me and sticking with me through this tough time. I think it's every day that I'm around them. I, I think of it that I, I I'm doing it for them and not just myself. Mm-hmm. And that I, I don't think I ever had that feeling. Even as a young girl, I never thought that I was doing it for my family or to really, yeah, I it never, or, or maybe because my family never made me feel like I had to, I, I don't, I don't know. Did you always love playing then? When you were younger? Yeah, but I never gave it, I never thought that, okay, if I play well, in a sense, this will cover, um, you know, my grandparents or my parents, mm. or they can travel around the world, right, and they right. can be financially stable. Like, that was never really, never thought about it. But I think in, after going through the last couple of years, when you see, because um, you're, as, as you know, I mean, I'm with my team so often mm. and all the time, and um, much more than I am with my family and what they do for you. And just on a daily basis, just the smallest things are, those are not things that are written in a contract. And, yeah. but I, you have to realize how important that is. And it really, I mean, it's, it's so crucial. It's mm-hmm. so crucial to have yeah. a great team that has your back, that understands and understands, understands you. And I know that's such a broad thing to say, like understands who you are, but Takes when time. you spend, it yeah. does take time and takes a lot of trust. And I'm someone that, you know, that, that likes to build the trust. And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't go into a partnership saying I immediately trust you and believe you. And think it, that, that, that sense of loyalty is so important to me. Yeah. So I definitely yeah. build on that with people and I challenge people. I think that's also important. And you I do. want people to challenge me. You challenge your team a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely, qu- I question their Everything. Even exercises, things, drills, <laughs> plans, schedule. I question it all the time. Wow. I know, which is kind of like... You're not easy like, to work with? Me... Come on. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they call a control freak? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> but I think it's good. I, I think the act of asking questions is so important. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think it opens That's up... That's what I love um, doing. Well... Clearly, yeah. I think it it opens up uh, different avenues, mm-hmm. different plans, um, and it makes like I I know that before my team comes up with a plan or a practice that they've thought about it because they know that I'm going to be thinking why are we doing this today, and what what is the idea behind right. it? What's the goal? They've got the best answers. So they've so, got yeah. the answers before I'm able to give them That's that good. question. That's good. Yeah. What advice would you give to a parent who's got a young child? that they put into a sport or a musical instrument or singing or something, they put them into a, a, an experience with a talent. What advice would you give them just in general about if you want to cultivate, right? I wish my father was here to help with that. But I mean, it's like, okay, you want your kids to succeed. Yeah. And knowing what you knew growing up and kind of where you're at now on the, the latter end of it. Yeah. I guess, what would you tell parents that they should focus on when cultivating the, uh, a champion's mind for children. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest gifts that my father um, gave me and something that I speak a lot about is this idea of he was my father and the guidance, but he never knew everything. So I think as a parent, um, mm-hmm. it's very easy to th- to believe that we are, not that I'm a parent at all, yeah, but yeah. to have the sense of they know everything and they know the answers and they know what's right for their child. And what my father was able to do for me was realize that he wasn't a tennis coach and he wasn't the best at that, but he would find the right people that could help me. Mm. And, and so that's, I don't know if that's kind of letting your ego step aside yeah. and being like, there are other people that I will oversee everything, but there are other people that are much more knowledgeable in my field than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a tough thing to do. And also yeah. having realistic goals and being very real. Like my father, 
and my mother as well were very w- well aware that in any day we could m- move back to Russia and having that realistic approach that that could happen without thinking about it negatively I think really helped mm. them because it gave them the security that even if they did go back to their previous life back home then that was okay yeah um I think a sp- I saw a lot of families while I was boarding at the academy and training at the academy that had this financial opportunity of having um you know, trying to fulfill unrealistic dreams. They weren't good enough. And they might have been good enough, but they weren't great enough. And I think that's a huge... To make the pro level right. and the elite level, yeah. It's a huge difference. You can maybe get a college scholarship somewhere, but... Which is a... I mean, that but can't you're paying take that more, for granted. But you're paying more for and like 10 years yes, to get the and, scholarship. And tennis is not a cheap sport. No. I mean, no sport is. Yeah. So I think having a... Just being real about mm-hmm. about your goals yeah. um, in the most sensible way. Do you feel like your father did a good job of switching off from parent to like manager, coach? Like where you felt like he was still your father as opposed to just focusing on one thing right. all the time? Well, one of the biggest things that he did was that, I mean, after I won three grand slams and you would think that he'd want to be – you know, overseeing that or being my coach, my, you know, that, that person that sits in, in my box during every match Mm -hmm. that I continue to play for the rest of my career. He said, you know, it was very, it was a very mutual decision that now you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And as I look at the tour now and I see, um, I see many examples of, um, of parents continuing their, their life on the tour with children. Um, and it's it's a very that separation is very difficult because you spend your life, um, you know, from a very young age being together, and mm. the parents always want to be by their side and kind of taking, I wouldn't say almost all the credit, but a lot right. of it does go to the parents. Yeah. And I think it was, I think just selfishly, I also wanted to prove that I could do it on my own. Sure. I think that was the competitor in me, and my father fully understood that and accepted that, and he stepped back yeah. and let me you know, get my own coach and, and do it on my own after already accomplishing what I had. It's amazing. Now, I remember you writing about there was one Grand Slam, I think it was you won, and he wasn't there, and you were, like, looking the up. The first one. Yeah. Right were, the French Open. You were looking up in the stands. You didn't see him. and um, Yes. So he just didn't come to the events anymore? Ever? No. He stopped. You just watched on TV or what? Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. He didn't even just come and sit as a spectator, like, at the top – I don't think there's like a there's no happy medium. You can't you can't do it. You well, if I don't there, know. If like I, always, ca- I don't know. I think if I if it's always if my father over. would come, I I would definitely want him to be sitting next to oh, my coach. Right, right. He's yeah. my father, but I think that so you time just said has, it's not you shouldn't come anymore. He was like, I'm not going to come anymore. Yeah. He hasn't been to a match since. Not maybe one or two. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He, he watches does. them all on TV. Though. Oh, he does. And I, sp- I mean, he sp- he speaks to my coach and I all the time every other day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And after every match, and he's still very much a big part of my career. Of course, but he doesn't. Come. Is it weird? That he's no. not there. It was weird in the beginning, and I think yeah. it was weird because I, 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 definitely, it just felt like I really wanted to prove that I could do it on my mm-hmm. own because so much of of our lives was me and him and trying to accomplish this together. And I, I think I just wanted, I loved that responsibility of proving that I could do it on my own. You did it. Yeah. With, and with we different. You got the great team. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, again, it's when I say on my own, it's you're Without on him. your own. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're on your own when you're out competing. But you know, that, that little group that's behind you every day, that's, mm-hmm. it, they're so very much part of your victory. So, mm. and I've, I've been able to win with, with all the, the previous three Grand Slams. I've had different coaches. Um, so it's it's been an interesting yeah. journey, and as I grow, as I grow up, I also learn a lot more about what what I would want or what I needed before is not what I need now, mm-hmm. and so making those adjustments, um, and also having a, a great connection. Maybe when I was younger, it wasn't as important for me, but really, just because they they become family, and as you're older, you you I don't know. We speak a lot about different aspects of life and conversation and. From the plane mm. to dinners and yeah. things beyond tennis, which I I love to do because we're so enclosed in the small world of, of sport, and yeah. I I like to I love to grow, and so having people yeah. that are that are smart and that can challenge my questions and answers, um, that have a a good brain on their shoulders mm. is is interesting. Yeah, what's the things you still feel like you need to learn? 
<sighs> either um, in the sport or I don't think we always know what we need to learn. Yeah. I think that's that's part of it. Is there um, anything that's holding you back then in your life or in any area? In yeah, any area? I mean, I think I think injuries is a big part of an athlete's career, as you know, yeah, as you very well know. And I think when you go through a few in your career, um, that hesitation and that uncertainty, and you become, you know, you become a little less comfortable and confident and less fearless yeah and you you think of it sometimes mm. a little you bit that more pain. you like, think of it more than than you should yeah and um so always i try to snap out of it because that's such a you know tennis is so physical and it's um it's so quick and there's so many movements and to feel healthy is is just completely healthy is a complete gift <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's almost impossible yeah, it's a complete throughout a tour gift. there's no way no no if chance. you're 17 again maybe right. right maybe so i think but there's so many things i mean you have the food and you have mm-hmm. diet and you have discipline and, and the way that exactly and the way that i believe we work out now compared to years ago is very different and more refined mm-hmm. and the quality is more important than um than quantity yeah so because it just sounded like you should just to be a beating yourself up constantly just like constantly I think it was like, more about hours and repetition yeah, just like and i don't necessarily think rep, that that rep. was the best way it was just the only way that was accessible yeah it was the tools you guys had yeah, yeah. and i just like one of I your think, coaches here that you would come to la he would just hit the same ball over same and over ball, for just, hours uh, yeah there was just this huge just, basket of balls and i don't know how you do it <laughs> and stay like excited and passionate and like motivated well he was a nut so yeah you he he brought <laughs> he made it fun and but just a, well if I look back at it now it was fun but in yeah. the moment it was brutal. But you just have to have such a a big reason why you're doing this every single day. I mean you're talking about getting up at five a.m. and going to the courts and then going to training and then film and then back at the courts like all day. It's just you have to really have a big reason why you're doing it, yeah. especially as a kid. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just like I want to go play with some other you know friends in the playground and not work. Yeah. Well, I want to know what it, I, I'm curious by what it would feel like to be better at what I do than today. So I'm curiously challenging myself to find <laughs> out what that would feel like. To be better than you already are right now? Yeah. To be better and to be, hmm. yeah, which I think that leads to better performances and quality mm-hmm. performances. And yeah, I, I, I think that's the feeling and drive that mm. still gets me, that, still gets me up in the morning do you ever feel like maybe doing less would be would make you better less of less reps less like lifting less um i th- I don't think i do i actually don't think that i do more than others do mm-hmm. um i think that the way that i train is maybe more quality focused yeah. and more yeah. intense um and I, I i if i bring that intensity certain amount of time i don't think that i could bring that intensity Mm. for six hours a day yeah Yeah. so but there are a lot of other variables that go into it and it's sort of the patience of carrying carrying yourself through the day going through the different phases of the gym and the warm-up to the tennis court to the cool down to the stretching to specific injury exercises to the rehab on the massage table and you know finishing your day up at 7.30, 7.30, 8 p.m. and doing it all over again from 8.30 in the next morning. So kind of having that patience is is crucial. <laughs> mm. What do you think you're going to do after tennis? Uh, Ye- years and years from now. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know. This, I think that's an uncertainty. I mean, I, I besides think Besides being a successful businesswoman and yeah. building brands and. Ugh, I mean, I. I envision a family. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have such a great bond with my family that I definitely envision that for myself. Yeah. Um, but that takes time. And with what I do now, it's very, you know, it's extremely difficult. Yeah. But it's definitely a, you know, a goal of mine, if that can be a goal or. Sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, business is a part of it. Yeah. You know, being, being excited about seeing something grow. Mm hmm. Yeah, being still being in a competitive atmosphere, I think that's what business brings to me as well, mm-hmm. even now. Yeah. Um, because there's not that's ultimately what tennis brings to me today, mm-hmm. and that's the driving force that nothing else can really replicate. Yeah, you love to win. Yeah. 
It's a good thing I beat you in bowling, though. I know. You have that one victory that I'm play never going <laughs> to <laughs> play some. Pa- we should play some ping pong. I can beat you at that, baby. Um, I'm sure you can probably beat me at every other sport. It's not tennis. <laughs> we played not once. Tennis. I want to play Definitely again. Definitely not tennis. I want to play like a real – not. Nah, I won't even be able to hit a ball back from you, but I want to play like <laughs> – some volleying or something and see okay. if see if I can try to hit something back. All right. Um, make sure you guys get this book. It's called Unstoppable: My Life So Far by Maria Sharapova. Uh, it's it's an incredible story of overcoming unbelievable challenges and adversity to making your dreams come true. It's a great story about trusting yourself, trusting your family, uh, having discernment in certain certain situations, knowing when to back off from things that or maybe too good to be true. And just how do you turn the lessons you learn from here on how you turn all these setbacks into comebacks to get stronger every time is just so inspiring. It makes me so uh, happy to know you you. and to be friends with you and to know like how you've gone through it all. Um, We did a previous interview where I asked a lot of other questions. We'll link it up below. You guys can learn more about kind of the rituals and routines uh, the more of the mindset um, and all this other stuff, uh, we'll have that linked up. But I'm curious, a couple final questions. What's the thing you're most proud of over the last two years since kind of all this has happened with the setbacks and right. now the comeback? What are you most proud of in your life? Right. Well, proud, of, proud that I still have this incredible motivation to keep going and mm. and that I really still want to keep doing it. I think that's no one can really – give that to you and no one no matter how much money no matter how many people you have around you family great words positive energy if you don't want it yourself it will be really hard to to live through it and so I'm Mm -hmm. definitely very proud that I still have that feeling and I think it's you know it has a lot to do with the mentality that I held through those couple of years um through the way that I handled it and got out in front of it, um, through the tone of voice that I had in my mind, the belief that I had in myself, and um, all those things really come into play. And, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, and that I still want more. I think that's something to be proud of. Yeah. And, yeah, probably can think of a few other things, but I, you know, I don't, you, you I handle don't, it with comp- such, I don't speak yeah. about myself. No, you handled it with such well. grace, like, which was again, so impressive for me. It's just like the level of grace and humility that you have throughout the challenges. Yeah. I as love those two def- words. Those are great words. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to like defensiveness and anger and. Yeah. I think those fighting, things only get you, know. you so far. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. they can get you immediate. I don't know. Attention or something. something. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I I just appreciate you so much, Thank and I'm so you. grateful to know you and to be Thank a part you. of you, you know this comeback and, and seeing everything. And uh, this book is really cool, so make sure you guys get it. It's called Unstoppable. You can go to mariasharapova.com at Maria Sharapova everywhere on social media. She's really active on Instagram and Twitter, so make sure to let her know what you thought about the interview. Get her book. Take a photo of the book at the store. Tag her on Instagram, Twitter yes, that you please. got the book. Um, and uh, you've been through that all before with your book, so you I know have. all the things. Get ready, that it's know. about to be an adventure. <laughs> You're about to go through a whole other like journey. Well, of... I just got like a first couple of book reviews, and I was like, Wait, people have read it before, and right. I was like, Yes, it's, so it's about a whole to get real. new process, it is, which I love. Like I said, like I, I love that people are able because I didn't share the book with, with many people at all, mm-hmm. I shared it with my best friend, and I shared it with my father, and um and my manager and those are the only few people that read it through this whole process and so now in the last few weeks i have finally been other friends are reading it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah all my other friends and my team and i think i was just scared to be influenced by everyone's mm, opinions smart. while it was not finished and smart so it was it's just been it's been great getting feedback and and hearing them just hearing like what everyone is taking away from it because i think everyone it Everyone kind of knows me in different parts of my life and not maybe all of it. And it was amazing that some of them still felt like there was so much that they learned in the story. Mm -hmm. And for some people that don't know me at all that were very inspired by this story. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's real, right? Like when you have a book and I just finished the audio version of the book. Which takes like three days. Three days. It's exhausting. Wow. (laughs) Wow. 
I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a book it's for really a hard. long while. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but I was really happy yeah. that I did it. Yeah. I think it's it adds another element of, you know, a fan can really see how it, how those words made you feel. Yeah, absolutely. So, like expressing that. Was, you're was you're going to inspire a lot of people with the book as Thank you do you. in your your competition and the way you carry yourself. So Thank c- congrats you. on this. Thank you. And uh, I'm so excited to see what's next. And uh, So am I. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing ride. I am as well. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you, Lewis. Appreciate it.